Hey y'all, Johnny Mullet here with another update on the bus build. Doing a little cleaning here. Uh, the floor is kind of nasty. And uh, I want to get it cleaned up. I know it kind of doesn't make sense because I still got to finish uh, sanding the ceiling, but hey, don't want to get overwhelmed. Don't want no screws in the driveway. There's a little action shot for you, huh? So, um, I'm looking at this coolant leak I have here. And from what I can see, it looks like it's coming from this hose connection right here. And I mean, I can tighten the clamp up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and tighten all the hose connections. They were a little bit loose. And now. I'm going to put a piece of cardboard or something under here and see if any more leaks develop because uh, I want to keep the heater, but, you know, it is what it is. If it's going to continue to leak, I don't want to, you know, have any problems. I'm like a switch guy. I don't know, man. I just, well, look at that, 15.0. There we go. Hmm, pretty good. Oh, I left the power inverter on all night long. That's good. I love playing with switches. I don't know, I just got so many switches and buttons and switches and knobs and stuff. Pretty cool. Anyway, um, I gotta show you some cool stuff we got going on in the garage, so... Let me take you on out there and show you what I got. Okay, here we are at the garage. We went to Home Depot and uh, we made some pretty big purchases here. This is going to be our 10.1 cubic foot refrigerator. We did not want a itty bitty tiny refrigerator. And this is like an apartment size refrigerator. So it's not huge, but it's not tiny either. And... We got a lot more lumber here. A bunch of two by fours, some more plywood. We got some OSB. And uh, we got some paneling hidden in that pile. And a couple strips here, paneling strips. And I think I showed you the insulation last time. But here's where we get some good stuff going. I got a new sink, single bowl, 22 gauge steel. And it comes with the faucet and sprayer and everything. And this is going to be the cabinet next to the stove when it's set up in the bus. And then over here, we have a sink base right here. This is um, unfinished oak. Uh, that's the sink base cabinet. And this cabinet here will be right next to it with the three drawers, you know, for your silverware and... You know, all the kitchen-related utensils will go in those drawers there. And we also have two upper cabinets. These will go above the kitchen area for overhead storage. And we also got this new countertop. And uh, it's pretty nice. I like the color. And we're going to finish... This is all unfinished, so we're going to finish this in that same summer oak stain that I used on the power distribution box. 
So let's talk a little bit. We're going to go on in the house where it's warm because it's like 13 degrees out here and uh, it's cold. Okay, welcome back guys. Man, is it freezing out there. I might, uh, might wait a little bit before I go out there. It's uh, really, really cold. Like I said, it's like 13 degrees outside. Um, we're supposed to get more snow in the forecast too. We're gonna get snow tonight and more snow tomorrow and they're saying another three plus inches of the white stuff. It's getting kind of annoying, but you know, I already talked about it, it's that time of year. So I wanted to touch bases on the build. Um, I showed you all the cabinetry and the sink and all that stuff. Well, we went to Home Depot to purchase these items and you know, normally when I go up there and I'm getting a few little things, I mean, there's a lot of helpers there, but it's hard to find help, if you know what I mean. Um, yesterday was different. A friend of mine, he had his trailer hooked up to his truck. He said he was moving some stuff around. Gave me a call and says, hey, Johnny, you want to get some more stuff? I got my trailer hooked up. Let's take advantage of it. I was like, sweet, let's do it. So I showed you out there, we got the cabinets, the countertop, the sink, the refrigerator, and uh, we started going there and I brought one of those big carts, you know, and I started loading the, the cabinets on. And like I said before, it's hard to find help there, but once a few of the workers was seeing, you know, the cabinets, the countertop, the refrigerator, next thing you know, there's like four people helping kind of weird. I guess, hey, if this guy's spending some money, let's let's give him some help. I don't know. But <clears throat> I went with the unfinished because I don't want white cabinets. Um, this kitchen here, we redid with a lot of white. And uh, I'm not really happy with it because, you know, white is really hard to keep clean. So all the cabinets and so forth in the bus, they're not going to be white. Um, we're going to have the white ceiling and any exposed wall might have some white paneling, but all in all, all the stuff that's going to be used is going to be wood. And it just looks better, it lasts longer, it stays cleaner. And if you do a good job standing and prepping and polyurethane, it, it cleans up pretty good. So we're going to go that route. So I can't wait to get started. Um, before my Amish friend comes over to help me start doing all this work, um, I've talked about the floor plan. And today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there and get every, you know, everything measured up make sure everything's going to fit where I want it. The shower is, it's a necessity in a bus. Um, I watched a few videos of other bus builds where they don't have showers. And it's okay if, you know, you got a gym membership or you got, you know, places you can go and take a shower, great. But to have a shower in your bus, that's, and if you're going to travel a lot, it's kind of important, you know. I'm not into stanking. Um my hair you know I got this sweet mullet been sporting this shit since the 80s and you know every single day it's a chore to get my hair to look this good you know hey I'm 47 years old I got all this I'm gonna flaunt it so the shower in the bus is and it's a necessity you know I can't you know I ain't gonna have no greasy mullet walking around plus the old lady likes to take showers too now, 33 gallon water tank, that's not a whole lot of water. Um, so we're gonna have to learn, you know, water conversation and learn how to conserve here and there. Um, I'm not like a tree hugger or an environmentalist or anything like that. Um, I do like to save fuel. As you know, I drive fuel economy cars and I don't do it because I'm trying to save the planet. I do it to save money and um, that's like recycled materials. I didn't want recycled materials in my bus. I know it's a great thing for environmentalists and people who want to help, you know, do their part. But I wanted new materials in the bus because it's got to last. And I'm not saying I've seen some bus builds with recycled materials that look beautiful. You know, they did a great job. But I want everything to match. And, you know, I have my plan to do it the way I want to do it. So, like George Carlin said, you know... The planet's fine. It's the people that are fucked. And it's pretty much true. The planet will take care of itself. 
And maybe one of these days it's going to shake us off like a bunch of fleas, you know what I mean? But I wanted to touch bases on that, and uh, that's why I want the pre-built cabinets. Um, it's a lot cheaper that way because my construction buddy was telling me to build the cabinets. If you're doing it yourself, you could probably do it cheaper. But since you're paying someone to do the carpentry work because you suck as a carpenter, it's going to be more expensive. And he told me that the oak pre-made cabinets are pretty decent. Um, the only part that's really oak is the face and the drawers and so forth. Um, the actual cabinet itself is made out of particle board, but that's, that's completely fine. And uh, so that's where we went. Um, before we even put that stuff in the bus, I want to get everything sanded, you know, get it nice and smooth, get it stained, and it's going to be pretty sweet. And uh, I had a few comments and a few people ask me about my hands and what's wrong with them. Uh, basically, I've been turning wrenches all of my life, and my hands are fucked. All right, pardon my language, I dropped the F-bomb twice already. But, uh especially with the cold weather, I got arthritis really bad. And like I said, I'm 47. I shouldn't have arthritis this bad and my hands are my weak spot. I mean, I got a good back, I got good knees. I'm pretty damn healthy for a smoker and a drinker and a party guy, but it's my hands that kill me the most. And the arthritis is pretty much crippling. I mean, some of my fingers won't straighten out. Um, it's hard to work with sometimes, especially when it's cold, but I deal with it. I don't take meds. I'm not a pill guy. I just, when I get up in the morning, they hurt like hell. But once I start working, using them, moving around, they're fine. So I get through every day with the pain, but I deal with it and it's okay. I mean, I'd rather have this as an issue than, you know, a bad back or, you know, bad knees or bad legs or, I mean, there's so many things, you know, health problems that people get. And uh, I think turning wrenches all my life has pretty much contributed to my arthritis in my hands. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. And um, I had a list here of stuff I wanted to talk about, but... I think I've pretty much touched bases, the shower, the pre-built cabinets, um, saving the planet. <laughs> Not really, but anyway, um, the hair, yeah. Why do you wear a mullet? I explained it. Um, I like the mullet. It's, uh, you know, business up front, party in the back. I don't know, it's just a hairstyle I've had most of my life. Um, I grew up in the 80s, the mullet was really popular. I started sporting the mullet and it just stuck ever since. Um, there was one time I cut it off and that was back in 93. And so I wanted to get a fresh start and uh, I just cut it all off. So I was mullet free in 93, but right after that I grew it back and I still got it ever since. So there's a little Q and A. Um, there was a few other questions people asked. Why didn't I get a 40-foot bus and stuff like that? But I didn't want a 40-foot bus. They're harder to park, and um, they're just huge. I mean, for two people, what I have is pretty much perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, and I'm going to make it work. You know, tiny living, tiny house things. You got to kind of measure everything and make it work. It's, it's not going to be an easy job to get everything in there the way I want to, but it's going to work out for the best. So I guess this will be episode 15, cabinets and more. Sure. Um, I went out to, and I ran the bus a little bit this morning before the sun came up and I hooked the scanner back up and none of those codes that I cleared out came back in the system. So they must have been old codes. But regardless, anybody that has a 7.3 liter um, international or Ford Power Stroke engine, and it's true, a lot of guys will automatically replace the camshaft position sensor and keep the other one as a spare. It's a common fail item. Um, another common fail item is the injection pressure regulator. Uh, it's called the IPR. And also the ICP is another common fail item. So I'm probably going to go ahead and purchase those items and just replace them just to have it done. Um, other than that, I mean, 
those engines are pretty bulletproof. And uh, come springtime when, you know, the weather warms up and stuff, I'm gonna change the oil, change the fuel filter, lube the chassis. The only mechanical issue I really have is I wanna do the front brakes because the rotors look really bad. Um, the brake pad, there's a lot of lining left, but they look old. Um, they're starting to crumble a little bit. So the back brakes were brand new, but anyway, I gotta pull the rims off anyway because I wanna paint the hubs and paint the rims white and paint the hubs black. and um, It's gonna look really nice. Those old school Dayton or West Coast rims, they look really good when they're painted up. And another thing nice about those is you can take those wheels off with hand tools. Um, the other style wheels, the bud wheel or the metric wheel, those require a lot of torque and they're usually put on with an impact gun at a garage. And they're really, really, really tight. Um, these wheels, on the other hand, they're completely different. And if I was to have a flat on the road, I could pretty much, with basic hand tools, change a tire. So that's a benefit of having that style wheel on the bus. Um, the other things I wanted to touch bases on was uh, let's see here. Yeah, the skylight and the vent cover. I told you guys before, I'm afraid to death of heights. Uh, when it warms up next weekend, I'm going to have a friend of mine come down, and we're going to go ahead and put that skylight in, and we're going to put the fantastic fan vent cover made by Max Air on there, and we're going to get that done. Um, i got to tidy up some wiring yet, and i got to run my plumbing. So the goal right now is get that ceiling sanded, get it cleaned up, get my water tank positioned where I want it and start running my plumbing before the cabinets and everything go in. So I got a busy weekend. I know it's already Monday, but Monday's part of my weekend. And uh, I'll give you another update when that's all good. So things are gonna start moving really fast and uh, the weather's gonna cooperate eventually and we're gonna get it done. So thanks for watching episode 15 on mullet schoolie build. I hope you enjoyed and uh, this one here was also filmed on my tablet and we're 17 minute video. I don't want to bore you with details and stuff and you know keep rambling on but the next video we'll have a lot more done for you so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.